Alrighty, good day and welcome. My name is Mr. Dement, and today we are going to be doing another photo B tutorial. Today we are going to be going through a glow effect. As you can see on the screen here, um, I've got some glowing and I've got some reflection going on Mewtwo. Today we're going to be walking through a tutorial to show you how to create this um, using Mewtwo, using the exact same image. We're going to be walking through step by step, so we can learn this process and understand how to make this happen. Um, before we get started, I am going to show you a couple of examples because I have done this through a couple of different bits of trial and error between some different images and some different styles, um, different colors, just so you can see some different examples of how this could look when you complete whatever project it is that you're doing to add this shape and add this bit of glow and neon into your image. So we'll go into our first one. We've got an image of Gengar. We've got the first couple are some Pokemon uh, just because I think that the glow worked really well. Um, especially on this image of Gengar. You've already seen our Mewtwo. Um, another Zapdos one. This one, again, the neon looks pretty good on this one. Not as phenomenal as some of the other ones, just because the yellow and the orange didn't really show up as well. But you can still see quite a bit of a difference between there. There's our original image of what Zapdos looks like, and there's it with the glow. You can kind of see it along the edges. Um, but. We are going to hop in and we are going to be continuing on and starting off manipulating and making this Mewtwo look the way we want it to with the glow and the colors that we choose. So to get started, I've dropped my image in here. Uh, it's a lot easier if you can start with an image that has a transparent background, like a PNG image with a transparent background or something with a solid color. That way you can select those colors and remove them. If you choose something that has a complex background, like it's in a forest or it's a person with let's say a city background, that'll be a little bit more difficult because you'll have to end up tracing that image. Uh, you'll have to use the pen tool and kind of cut it around it. That'll be a little bit more time consuming than if you can find an image or have an image um, where the background is easier to grab. You can use the magic wand tool, something like that. Uh, but if not, again, the pen tool will work. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do that, how to select that. Um, I already have my image here that's all removed and just for ease of doing this tutorial and ease of um, doing this project. So without further ado, we're going to start by creating a background. So I'm just going to go down here to our shapes and I'm going to select rectangle. I want to make it filled. So we're going to select white and we'll make it a black fill because I think that the black will look a lot nicer. And we're going to close our fill menu and we're just going to select the whole space. Oh, we don't have fill on. Bam, bam. Now we've made that shape, we've made that, we've dropped that in there, we're going to drop that below our Mewtwo. And we're actually going to copy it, so we're going to go to that layer, we're going to go to shape 1, we're going to press Control J, that's going to make a copy of it. We're also going to make a copy of our Mewtwo. Um, we're going to merge these layers just so we can see what our image actually looks like when we're done in comparison to how it started. I think it's really cool to see those transitions, so that's kind of how we're going to go about doing this uh, through this tutorial. So. Now that we've got our background, we only got our image of Mewtwo and we've got our black background, we're going to go and we're going to select our shape again. So we're going to go down here, we're going to right click on our rectangle uh, menu and we're going to go to parameter shape, parametric shape, sorry, and you're going to select your sides to be three, um, three being a triangle. Uh, we're going to turn off the fill layer. So if you have the fill layer on, you're going to click on the drop menu and you're going to make it the red X. Then you're going to go to your stroke and you're going to want to make it white. Um, so that needs to be filled, which is this white square here, and you want to make sure that's clicked on white. Uh, for the next bit, you're going to want to mess around with the pixel count when you're um, playing with this, so that way when I'm dropping my triangle on here, I'm trying to make it as straight as I can, you can see that that triangle looks kind of thick, but that's totally okay for me, that's perfect. Uh, depending on how big your image is or the pixel count of your image is, you might have to increase that or decrease that to kind of show the triangle in the way you want it to without it being super, super thick or too thin where you can't really see it. So with our triangle now made, I'm going to drag that in and it doesn't really cover all that well in comparison to our other triangle in the demo in the example that I showed earlier. So I'm just going to stretch and manipulate this a little bit to kind of show it so that way I can end up having this hand kind of pop out and the top of Mewtwo's head pop out of this triangle when we're going about this uh, project. So that's cool, that's awesome, that's what I've chosen, that's where I'm happy with having um, this triangle. This triangle is going to end up having the neon effect on it shortly, 
Um, but just make sure that you're happy with your placement, where you have it, where you have it stretched, whether you want it thinner, longer. If you want the triangle the other way, it works the exact same. Uh, it just depends on how you want to place this triangle. If you do need to rotate it, if you hover around the outside of your triangle, you'll see this new arrow pop up. You can just grab it and give it a spin, um, whichever you prefer, so that way you can get your desired location. Now, once I've got this triangle, I'm happy with it, you're going to want to copy this triangle. So you're going to select your shape, and you're gonna do Control J. Um, now we're not gonna mess with our copy layer, the layer that's on top, we're gonna to be playing with the layer that is below it. This is how we're gonna end up getting that glow and that effect, and this is where we're gonna start choosing that color. So with our shape two, our not our copy, this is gonna be our glowing shape. Um, we're gonna go and we're gonna select effects. So we're gonna to go to our layer style and effects, we're gonna click on that, and we are gonna to go to stroke. As you can see, I've already got a bunch of different settings set up, but when you get started on here, yours will not look like this. Um, yours will look probably something similar to this. So how do I get to the menu that you just saw? You're gonna go through this fill type and you're gonna go to a gradient. Once you've selected gradient, you can mess around with the opacity if you truly want, but usually leaving that at 100% will help us for later times. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to change those colors. Normally these colors will be black and white, so to adjust those, you double click on that. So you'll double click on this color menu right here and you'll open up this space. Uh, you'll just double click on either one of these locations, left and right, and that'll allow you to change the colors to be whatever it is that you want them to be. Um, just for ease, I'm gonna use this bright pink and I'm gonna use the bright blue. Um, it'll kind of help me for choosing my colors and selecting some stuff later, just for my ease as I'm going through this demo. Uh, so I've chosen my two colors. I'm going to click OK, and then you can kind of mess around with some of these angles and some of these scales. By spinning this scale and this angle, you can see that we're moving that blue around to different areas um, on our triangle. I'm going to leave it on the right side of Mewtwo's face, and I'm going to play with the scale a little bit just to kind of get something that I think looks ideal. This is all personal preference, so make it look like how you want it to look. Once you're happy with it, you're going to click OK. And you're gonna leave that now this doesn't look like a glow and it's not meant to yet so next thing we need to do is we need to end up right clicking on that layer and we need to convert it to a smart object this will allow us to manipulate this layer and get that glow effect that we actually want so we're gonna go up and we're gonna go to filter and we're gonna go to blur and we're gonna go to Gaussian blur with Gaussian blur selected you're gonna mess around this is how it'll probably start and you're just gonna pull that slider out until you get the neon look that you want. It can look like that, it can look like that. There's a lot of different variation to how you can have your neon look depending on how you want it or need it to. But for me, I'm gonna stick with about there. I think that looks great for this image for now. Uh, and then I'm gonna click OK. And what we've done is we've messed with the bottom layer. So if you were messing with the top layer, this is really what you've done with that bottom layer. You've blurred it, you've made it all blurry, and that layer that we've left on top, being that white triangle, that's why we made a copy, it looks like that is the piece that is illuminating and glowing that color. So with this created, just to make things a little bit easier so we don't end up changing any of these layers or moving something and messing them up, we're gonna merge them. So I'm gonna go to merge down when I selected that top triangle, and that's gonna merge those two triangles together. Now they are one, I can't really manipulate them the same way, um, but this is just for ease of doing this as you're kind of going about this project, I think that this works a little bit nicer. Uh, now, with that selected, uh, we're gonna have our shape two selected, our triangle selected, and we're gonna go to our eraser tool. Um, you wanna make sure that your eraser is set on one of these harder brushes, hardness being 100%, and size, will probably be whatever you need it to be for this step. You'll probably have to adjust and mess around with that as you're going about this project. Um, for me, this is awesome. This is where I'm gonna have this. And I'm gonna start erasing where the line is for where Mewtwo would be showing through. So for me, that'll be right here on his little uh, finger. That'll be here on his hand and a little bit on his head for how I'm going to erase this and where I'm going to erase this. To make it easier, I'm going to zoom into some of these locations. You'll see that it becomes a little pixelated. That's totally cool. When we're zoomed out, it looks fine. Um, so I'm just going to go about and I'm going to be racing this. Make sure your opacity and all of your stuff is 100% on the top. And just go about and erase that and erase any of those glows. Might be there. 
for me I'm trying to get as much of that uh, black background as I can the black outline of Mewtwo's hand and body and I'm just gonna do that through the entire section of his hand bam, bam. and take your time with this this is something that will either make your project look really good or make it look not so good if you try and rush this if you don't end up um, getting this outline quite good quite perfect so take your time take some time make sure that it looks how you want it to look give it that good final project look and bam 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 got a little bit up here and you can adjust your brush size you can adjust your eraser size as you're going through to be whatever suits your needs so that way you can get that fine detail get that fine look for whatever it is uh, that you're doing on your project so bam do that and the reason I'm doing this outside where the glow is it's because the glow is not going to show up on his uh, ears or on the top of his head because it's going to be behind him so you won't really see that glow on the top of his head that same way um, but we'll show you how to make this glow effect and how to make this fade effect or this reflective effect uh, once we are done with this erasing so again take your time sometimes it's a little hard to kind of see some of these things if it makes your life a little easier you can change the opacity and drop that opacity down so that way you can see things a little bit easier and a little bit nicer um, so that way you can make those erasing lines a little bit cleaner oh we've gone a little bit over as you can see i've made a little whoopsie there so i'm going to press ctrl z to make that go away and then we're just going to work on this and clear all that up I'm gonna change my size because as you can see, things are getting a little bit complicated up here in this corner. Beautiful, and now we're gonna zoom back out. And bam, you can see this glow showing around him, which looks really cool, but that we are not done. There's still a bunch more we're going to do. So since we're having him show through this triangle, we need to erase the bits that are outside of the triangle that we don't want. So we're gonna select our background copy, which is our Mewtwo layer, our actual Mewtwo layer in this option. Um, we're going to grab our eraser. We're gonna make the size a little bit bigger just to make this go a little bit faster. And you wanna get close and kinda of touch that glowing line a little bit, just so that way there's no overhang for our image of Mewtwo kinda of hanging out of that triangle. Bam, bam. And if you mess up, it's just one control Z away from fixing your error. Control Z is our undo. Uh, it'll make it look better. It'll undo whatever it is that you've done. So that way, if you make those errors, we can remedy those. We can fix those. So it's super awesome. Always remember that control Z is your undo button. Awesome. So we've got our image of Mewtwo. He's sitting here. Now, we can't see any of the glow effect really on him. The glow effect is just around the neon. So now we're going to add that and we're going to uh, create that glowing effect. To do that, we are going to create a new layer. We're gonna do this a couple of times. So remember where this layer button is, um, it just says new layer. It's going to create a new layer exactly as it sounds. Um, we're gonna be selecting our eyedropper tool. This is going to be choosing one of the colors. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna try and find one of these colors that we want. Bam, we're gonna grab this pink first. And now that has chosen that color as pink because that's the color we're going to be making this glow in this portion of Mewtwo about. So we're gonna go to our brush and we're gonna pick this little fady color. You can mess with this size, whatever works. Again, you're gonna have to mess around with it to get different areas and get different spots. Um, and I suggest lowering the opacity. You'll see why in just a second. If I have this all as full and I go to throw this neon on here, it looks fine, we can adjust it later and we can play with the opacity later. Um, but rather than do that later, we can kind of do that now. I usually drop mine around 50 to 35-ish percent and I drop my flow rate a little bit just to make it a little bit uh, cleaner to help me in the future just with cleanup and making this look a little bit more presentable later. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of this glow effect on the spots where I think the light is going to hit. And again, we're getting into a different color territory, so I'm not gonna do too much down there. Probably we'll see a little bit here and a little bit here in terms of Mewtwo's hands. And we might end up seeing a smidge of there. Awesome. So 
I've got my pink, I've got my pink where I want it. Now we're gonna create a new layer so we can do that bluey color. So same deal, we're going to our eyedropper tool and we're gonna go around till we find the blue that we want. Grab that blue and we're gonna go back to our paintbrush and we're gonna paint blue in those areas that we want that blue effect. Now if we need to do a third layer so we can grab this more white-y color, that's totally cool. Um, whatever it is that you need to do to make this effect look the way you want it to. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of the side of his face. Bam. And maybe a little bit of his shoulder. Awesome. Now you're probably looking at this going, this doesn't really look good, Mr. Bent, and I 100% understand. It doesn't look good yet. We still have some adjustments to do. We still have some things to do. So now we're gonna end up playing with some of these other options. This ends up being a little bit personal preference and depending on your image, it might change what needs to be done. But I'm gonna show you a few of these options and a few of these things. So with my blue layer, that layer that is on the right side of Mewtwo, we can go down and we can go soft light and you can see that that really didn't help all that much. That almost got rid of everything. So that's not an option we wanna use. You can mess around with hard light, check out vivid light, just see what one works better for your image depending on the lighting. Um, the vivid light looks pretty nice, but it's a little lighter than what I would like for me. And again, just kind of messing around with some of these. This linear light looks pretty nice. It looks really glowy. Um, I really like how that's looking in this moment. Uh, now I'm gonna go to the pink and I'm gonna mess around with that as well. Since I liked the linear light, we're gonna go to that again. I think that looks like my favorite one. Now, if that light looks too bright, it looks too glowy, we can mess with the opacity again of what we've done. So I'm gonna lower that opacity a little bit just so we can kind of soften that glowing. Um, I think I like where the blue is sitting. I think the blue looks pretty clean. So I'm happy with where that is. So we're not done. We've got one more step left to do. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a fade with our eraser tool. Now, I don't really need to do that on mine. Maybe a little bit down here on the leg, a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how to do that and how we can make a little bit of a lighter erase rather than messing with the opacity on everything on the page. So we're gonna go to our eraser tool and we're going to select our brush. And we're gonna go to this one on the left, which is our soft round brush. Um, you can adjust with this size and mess it up to see where it is, how big of a space you need to do this. But really the important part is lowering this opacity. So I'm gonna lower this opacity down probably to around like 20-ish percent. Um, and since I, make sure that you're on the right layer. So now I'm on the pink layer and I'll just show you what this can do. So if I sit here and I go over it, and I just keep clicking on it, you'll see that I've erased that, but it took quite a few clicks to get that back. Oh, we gotta go redo our, do our opacity change. Thank goodness for the menu up here, otherwise we'd have to redo a few things. Um, but I can just kind of go over it a couple times in a couple sections, and you can see I'm kind of softening um, these colors. Bam, just kind of soften them a little bit, just to make it a little bit more blendy, a little bit more soft we'd want to make this a little bit less hard in terms of what i'm looking for for the colors on my mewtwo image for example again this becomes a lot of personal preference so however you want yours to look but with that i'm happy with how my neon effect looks uh, the triangle looks really nice um, i'm not very centered on the page so if you're not very centered like me on this page you're going to go to your cropping tool and you're just going to crop the space to be what you want it to be Maybe try and make him as centered as possible. Pop that in a little bit. Drop that down. Enter. Bam. And now we are completed this neon effect with the glow showing up on YouTube. Now, this isn't perfect. Um, there's definitely little flaws and little bits if I had spent more time to make this look perfect. Uh, but this is just an example of what you can do and how to create this and how to use the tools to make this effect. Now, with all that being said, I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you found this useful and I hope that you learned something. As always, have a wonderful day. Take care and be safe.